Okay, so uh, let's get started. So the first speaker this afternoon is Steve Boyer, and uh, he's going to tell us about the Homeo S1 representations and the L space conjecture. Yeah, thanks, Doc, and uh, thanks, Ken. I'm having a really delightful time. It's, it's great to be you know, in person and just interacting with people, listening to a lot of really good mathematics. So uh, today I'm going to talk about joint work, mostly with Cameron Gordon and Ying Hu, but also some uh, in part with Adam Clay. Um, so throughout, uh, M will be uh, closed, connected, orientable, and irreducible three-manifold. And the goal is to show how you know, various structures on uh, on M will lead to interesting representations of your plus S1, so we'll get into that but later, but in particular, arising from uh, uh, pseudo MSL flows and uh, current to top on the manifold. And I want to uh, use those to say something about uh, left order ability uh, in various contexts, uh, in particular, toroidal three manifolds. Uh, surgery on uh, satellite knots and uh, branched covers. Uh, hyperbolic links. Now, of course, I'm not going to get all that done. Uh, it's really, this is sort of a sampler of what these uh, techniques can lead to. I think realistically, I'll uh, mostly talk about this. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, that's the goal. And, but also what I want to do as well, because there's a, somehow there's a, there's a format uh, uh, arising out of this, and um, another question we want to ask is the results we prove about left ability. can you also uh, make similar deductions about the existence of core and top foliations? And so that's the, the goal today. And what I'm going to do is start with a what at first glance uh, seems to be a rather random and maybe even pointless question is what is the significance of the existence of a non-trivial homomorphism, pi 1m. So non-trivial just means I don't want the image to be the trivial one into homeo plus r. Well, at first glance, as I said, this seems like a rather arbitrary and perhaps rather banal question. But it turns out that under these hypotheses here, it's a consequence of a result of mine with Dale Rolfson and Bert Beast that such a homomorphism implies pi 1m is left orderable. Okay, so there's a certain amount of work going into proving that, but that, that shows that uh, so the existence of a non trivial action is a fundamental group on the real line by orientation preserving. Uh, homeomorphisms um, leads to uh, the left order ability of this group, and then the L space conjecture feeds into this. Uh, the following are equivalent for M, and then because uh, I'm going to be using these uh, abbreviations, so M is LO, and by that I mean pi 1 M non trivial. Uh, left orderable. Uh, so that's one. Two. M is CTF, which is just shorthand. Shorthand for M admits a core into top foliation, which I'll probably, from time to time, uh, just write like this: <laughs> uh, CTF. And three uh, M is not. Oh, sorry, M is NMS. M is 
it's not a Hagar fleur. I'll space. So if you like, say we're using Z, Z2 coefficient. Okay. So um, I guess in the, at least from my point of view, uh, this uh, question is actually quite quite interesting. So this, it is quite interesting to uh, uh, try to construct representations like this. So how do you do that? Well, um, let's step sideways for a bit because what does happen is that um, I. I don't know a lot of constructions which, uh, or structures on three manifolds which lead immediately to homeo plus R reps. By the way, I'm going to assume this is a, just for simplicity, a rational mall V3 sphere as well. Um, so, uh, so it's just what does arise often are homeo plus S1 reps. And there's a long list of situations which various structures. Um, so what we're interested in are building representations pi one m to homeo plus s one, um, but non-trivial image. Okay. So, um, for instance, uh, if you're cyphered fibered and the base orbifold uh, is hyperbolic, okay, so then that means you can, its fundamental group is isomorphic to a subgroup of the isometry group of H2. So if you further assume it's, and by the way, that's, that's a generic situation for a cyphered manifold. If you further assume that it's orientable, then uh, you get a, the, pi, the base orbifold has fundamental group in PSL2R which is acting on the circle. So you get pi one of m to pi one of the base orbifold, which is a subgroup of PSL2R. <clears throat> and there are other, you know, if you're a, if m is hyperbolic and its trace field is, it has a real place, it means that there's a, uh, the trace field is isomorphic to a uh, subfield of the reals, you also get a, um, a such thing. So, and there are many other instances, uh, you know, you can use the uh, classical Classical invariance to sometimes uh, build PSL2R representations. Thing is that PSL2R representations don't suffice. There are, uh, for instance, uh, um, if I look at plus five surgery on the figure eight knot, it has no interesting representations to PSL2R, but it does. It's as an injective, a faithful representation of homeo plus S1. So you really have to. In this game, you have to work with homeo plus S1. You can't restrict yourself to some sort of nice uh, big group. Okay, so um, the two situations where reps like this arise from, well, naturally, From, well, I'll give you two examples that are that we're going to be looking at today. Is that um, uh, CTF on M? If I M has growing to top foliation, you have Thurston's universal circle representation. Pi one M, and I'll call it uh, rho sub F. It's a homeo plus S1. Uh, and then the CTF is, so at a script that is a uh, according to top foliation. And given such a thing, third set, I mean, this is a, a really beautiful deep result uh, constructing this. And uh, so you have this, like, these two examples, they lie deeper than the cipher example. Um, it's non trivial work to actually construct these. The second is if phi is a pseudo anisoft flow, on M, then various people have constructed um, associated with mass, it'll call the asymptotic circle representations. So um, in particular, there's uh, 
uh, Calgary Dunfield uh, uh, around 2003 uh, constructed a, a representation. If M happens to be hyperbolic, it's a, it's a faithful representation. But in general, it's, it's going to be non-trivial. Uh, Fenley has another absolutely beautiful construction where, um, yeah, which you can say a lot about, and I won't. But uh, these are two of the key uh, constructions of uh, really interesting representations. Oh yeah, so I'll call this uh, pi one m rho sub phi. These are different representations in general, and but I'll just put them under the collective name of rows of phi. So, okay. Now, what does this have to do with the question we started with over here? Well, what it has to do with is that if I just take a representation from pi 1m, the homeo plus S1, if the stars are aligned correctly, you see, then I can lift it to homeo ZR. These are all the homeomorphisms of the real line, which commute with translation by one. Well, so we've got this, and this, there's a, um, well, this is a universal cover. There's a natural uh, homomorphism from homeo ZR, or basically just working mod Z, the integer symbol. It, if I've got something here, I can get something down here by quotienting. And uh, you see, this is uh, the inclusion of SO2 in this is a homotopy equivalent. So this has a homotopy type of the circle. That's an infinite cyclic cover. And you can ask, uh, can you lift that? If you can lift it, then you see we end up with a non-trivial representation in the homeo ZR. But of course, that's a subgroup of homeo plus R. So that's doing what we want to do. Uh, so it turns out uh, there exists a class called the Euler class of, of the representation, and it's in the two-dimensional homology, uh, cohomology of them, which is zero. Um, so um, I guess you could say that it's it's really it is interesting to construct uh, representations in the homeo plus s one, especially those for which you can show that the Euler class vanishes. So that's like a purely topological condition. This uh, class. Yeah. So you see, uh, this universal covering group, the uh, it's an infinite cyclic cover. So and in fact, the kernel is a central copy of Z in here. That's a central Z uh, extension of this group by Z, which you pull back and get a central extension over here. And these central extensions are classified by elements in the two-dimensional cohomology in a very standard classic way. So that's the what the other class is. And it, yeah, the E of rho is zero if and only if this extension is trivial, which is equivalent to saying that you can have to get a lift. So um Is there a good reference where that story is written down about you know, central extensions and Euler classes? Um, well, uh, yes, uh, uh, but I, yeah, I'd have to think to find something or I could, I'll tell you something after all. Yeah, but I mean, if you, if you, this is just classic, uh, if you look at Rotman's book, for instance, he'll, uh, he'll talk about the, is class, classification of, it, of, a, of extension to the group by it. And it'd be something with an abelian center. In that, that. Well, it's like it's the prehistory of cohomology. 
this goes back to sure. Yeah, it's a sure multiplayer. Okay. It's it's and the only reason I hesitate is that there are all these references, but from the point of view of a contemporary topologist, maybe you want a more efficient presentation. We can talk about that after. Uh, Steve, yeah. Is there like a analog of Chern Simon's function that we said these are critical points? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's do a simple case. Uh, if M is a ZHS, so it's an integer, integer homology, homology sphere. This implies H2M is zero. So you win, right? Uh, the Euler class is necessarily going to vanish. So then, then existence of rho as in star implies and the zero. And actually, in uh, uh, Talhi's talk this morning, he uh, alluded to that. And, uh, <clears throat> okay. So, uh, so then, conjecturally, uh, M is CTF. So it has current affiliation by. And not an L. Okay, so um, with respect to this, there's a really nice conjecture of Oshvath and Sabo, uh, which I'll call the Higar Fleur Poincare conjecture. Sabo, uh, well, if M is NHS, then M is NLS. So it's not an L space, if and only if M is not S3. Or the Poincare homology. So what this means. I, I love this because, uh, amongst other things, what it says is uh, three manifolds with the simplest homology have complicated topology. Right? This is what you're expecting. Say either you know the, the the fact that you're building this manifold and you're killing the first homology forces a lot of complexity. Either you you reduce the everything collapses to something very simple, but but those are the only two cases. Generically, you get some. You have complicated topology. Your NLS, you expect to be the portable. You expect to have a core input population. Okay, and this is a lot of this. Can you say once more what this NLS I just means you're not a Hagar Fleur L spotting. So, um, this has been verified in a number of cases. Uh, and what one that I want to talk about, or at least mention today, is that uh, there's a result of F to carry, human F to carry, uh, says that toroidal R NLS. So if you have an integer homology free sphere with an essential torus, it's not an L space. Maybe just, I know you said it earlier, but to emphasize, especially in comparison with the toroidal, you are assuming M is irreducible. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, how long? It's really important that I'm, just, yeah, that M is uh, irreducible. Yeah. But I guess this uh, Hagar Fleur Poincare conjecture plus the other conjecture implies the old Poincare conjecture, even if you don't assume irreducible, because you always like, well, well, subdivide it. So the, their conjecture was, uh, <laughs> if, if you're a zetymology three sphere and you're in L space, you're a connected sum of the two, three, five, or S three. Okay, so uh, the first result I want to talk about, so if I theorem A, and that's joint with uh, Cameron and Ying, 
you said toroidal I said HS's are at hello. They have left toroidal time numbers. And um, I'll give you an idea of the proof. We're going to use Thurston's universal circle representations. What's interesting here is not just the proof, but how the proof is structured, which I'll, and I'll address that, why that's interesting later on. So um, so what's the idea? Well, you're going to split M along an essential torus. So here, um, Each mi is what I'll call a knot manifold. And by a knot manifold, I just mean a compact connected orientable uh, three manifold whose boundary is this torus, an incompressible torus. Orientable, irreducible with boundary MI and incompressible torus. For instance, if you're the exterior of a non trivial knot in S3, you're a knot manifold. Okay. Um, but moreover, since M is an integer homology three sphere, each MI is an integer homology solid torus. Integer homology solid torus, which all that means is that it has the integer homology of a solid torus. In other words, it's the cosmology of a circle. Okay, so that just that just comes out of the fact that M is, is an integer homology three sphere. And moreover, um, if lambda i in pi one of t, if that's a longitudinal class for M i, so what you mean by that is that lambda i is a uh, represented uh, by, carried by a simple closed curve, which is null homologous in MI. An essential simple closed curve, which is null on T, which is null homologous in MI. This is a longitudinal class. for MI, then well, the algebraic intersection number on T between lambda 1 and lambda 2 is 1. In other words, the distance between these two slopes is 1. Yeah, it turns out that the uh, this being an integer homology, uh, three sphere is equivalent to uh, these two. <laughs> that, uh, that's a set homology solid torus and the distance between the longitudinal. Steve? Which one? Yeah. Longitudinal means it dies in MI? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So homologically trivial in MI, but uh, essential on the torus. Okay. So. Um, is this like a homology along the exact sequence? So, um, if I, yeah, if you, you look at the two dimensional, yeah, if you look at the two dimensional, this will have, these will have cipher surfaces like Bernard's and exterior. So, there's a generator of the two dimensional homology of MI modulo T. And uh, it's like a cipher surface, and you look at its boundary. The boundary is the longitudinal file. Like the half of the side values. Um, okay, so uh, 
Now, that's, it. Uh, that's the first thing I wanted to say here. Now, two, this is going to be a little bit of a black box, but certain slopes on T are order detected in MI. So I'm not going to, this is the most natural definition of this uses left orders. I'm not going to do that just for time, but let, let me give you an, a sufficient condition, each. If there exists a homomorphism, row from pi 1 of uh, mi to homeo plus r. In fact, we can make this homeo z. Doesn't matter. Such that if beta in uh, pi 1 t is primitive, Yeah, okay, so let me, certain slopes alpha is primitive, then rho of beta has fixed points in R if and only if beta is alpha plus minus one. I can think of alpha. It's a slope, but I can think of it as a primitive element in pi of t. Okay, so that, like I said, this is a bit mysterious and perhaps unmotivated. But what it's saying is that we can find a representation of pi 1 mi into homeo plus r, such that when I restrict to what's happening on the torus, that basically um, uh, the, the only thing, the only primitive element in pi 1 of t which can have fixed points is either alpha or alpha inverse. And so we're going to call such a slope order detected. You can take that as a definition. Yeah, I apologize. It's like I said, it's unmotivated, but uh, this is a condition that we're going to verify and use. Okay, so um, for instance, lambda 2 is order detected. In M2, i.e., I go from, let's I'll call it row 2, pi 1 M2, goes to H1 of M2, which is, we can identify with the integers. Remember, this is an integer, this is an integer homology circle. So, and then I can include this into homeo ZR by sending N to translation by n. So um, the only thing which is, the only uh, slope which is killed under this is the longitudinal slope. It's homologically trivial here. But all the others are homologically non-trivial. And uh, so they would go to an n non-zero. And you can verify then. Uh, It has six points. If and only at uh, beta. I mean, and like I say, lambda 2, obviously, it's not only does it have the fixed points, but uh, row 2 of lambda 2 is trivial because it's dying under this. So, this is one thing which happens with the theory of orders. Uh, it's got two, it's like you have a dynamic side, actions on the reals, and uh, then you have the sort of formal algebraic order side. And, but they're really the same thing, and you, you know, if you're working in the area, you're often going from one to the other, uh, which are, you know, depending on the convenience. Okay. So, Theorem B, uh, oops, uh, 
again, that's with uh, Cameron and Ying. If M1 is an integer homology solid torus, which is a knot manifold, it's important that you have incompressible boundary here. Then any slope of distance one from the longitudinal slope of M1 is order detected. WG and the two is order detected in M1. See, we already know that lambda 2 is order detected in M2, just using this rather simple representation. Now we're going to do some non-trivial work to show that it's order detected in M1. Now why is that interesting? Because uh, there in C, and that's joint work with Adam Clay. If I glued together two knot manifolds in a way that an order there's an order detected slope. Sorry, there's a slope on the on the torus between the two manifolds, which is order detected on both sides. And the manifold has a left vertical fundamental group. Uh, two knot manifolds. And there is a slope on T, which is order detected on both sides. in M1 and in M2, then M is LO. So what this is, this is like a combination theorem. Um, and what's going on, uh, you see, what we know is that, say, order detection means that I have certain types of representations on one side, certain types of representations on the other. But they may not match along the torus. But this is saying that if you can, if two, if there is a slope which lines up, you know, which is detected on both sides, then in fact you can modify the representations on each side to get ones which match on the torus. So there's, that's non-trivial, uh, but uh, yeah, very useful. So you see then uh, theorem A. and follows from uh, theorems B and C. Okay, that's the type of game we want to play here. Uh, so let me uh, make a few comments. I'm not going to say anything about the proof of this, but this one I will, because this is where you're using uh, universal circle representations to do this. And so this, this will be a very um, sketchy OK, so um, if I start out like this, I know I can use Gabby's thesis to say there exists a, C, a core intertopical on M1, F with a compact leaf, where the 
boundary class is a longitudinal class. So this F would be like a minimal gene assigned to separate surface. Okay, so now you're going to, I want to apply Thurston's universal circle construction, but I can't do it on M1 because it's a manifold boundary, but what I, you do is you double the manifold. And so I double M1 and double the foliation. This foliation is transverse to the boundary. You can make it uh, perpendicular to the boundary. So you double it. Now, you, there's something you have to verify. You have to verify that all the leaves have exponential growth. But it turns out that you can do it in this case. They have exponential growth. So you, you um, can find a universal circle representation on the double of M1. Uh, related to this according to top foliation that you get by doubling F. And so then universal circle uh, rep or construction yields. No, I just want to restrict that representation on the double of M1 to just M1. Okay. So um, we've got a representation. Is it interesting? Well, what you have to do is now you have to dig into the um, construction of the universal circle representation. Uh, and you have this key fact coming out of that. Rho 1 restricted to pi 1 f. So remember, pi 1 f is just a uh, what's that? compact it's a compact surface, uh, connected surface of uh, positive genus. This, it's not quite conjugate to, but it's what's called semi-conjugate. Which is, you, morally you can think of it as just being conjugate to a discrete faithful. Pi 1 f to PSL 2 r. So this is all part and parcel of the universal circle construction. On each of the leaves of the foliation, See, in the universal circle construction, you, you find a, a Ramanian metric on the manifold, which restricts to one which is hyperbolic on each of the leaves. And uh, so f, the double of f, so this is a closed surface of some genus, and I have a, a a discrete faithful representation. Now, it's not quite a discrete faithful. There's something called semi conjugacy There's some whatever that means, but you can think of it as that. And this, um, using this, this implies row one of pi one t has a fixed point on S one. Okay, uh, again, that's, that's not obvious. If this was a discrete faithful uh, representation, you see, and, and the pi one of the lambda one is actually going to be a hyperbolic element of PSL2R. It has precisely two fixed points, one of which is attracting and one of which is repelling. And anything which commutes with uh, lambda one would have to fix those, each of those uh, two fixed points. And so the merit, uh, any transverse class, and that's how you would. If this actually was discrete faithful, uh, that's how you would get this. Uh, in general, uh, you don't know that, so then you have to dig into the construction of the universal circle to show that it still holds. Um, now, row one from here to here, it lifts. Because your homology circle, the two-dimensional cohomology vanishes. So there's the Euler class obstruction to lifting this. So uh, I know it lifts. And again, you use the fact that the restriction of row one to this is semi-conjugate to discrete faithful. There exists uh, a lift of uh, row one tilde. Either row 1 tilde of row 1. 
uh, for which only one to two has fixed points on R. Okay, so this is uh, it, it's probably not very satisfying uh, amount of detail, um, but uh, I, just, I wanted to sketch it that uh, you're using in a non-trivial way not just the existence of this representation, but its actual its properties, the basic properties of it to um, to get what you want. Uh, and you see, it's the second one, the existence of the lift, row one tilde from pi one uh, of m one to homeo set of r, for only lambda two as fixed points. So lambda two is going to be order detected in uh, in m one. Yeah. Uh, so if you allow T to be compre uh, compressible, where did this, this uh, argument fail? Well, <coughs> well, if you just looked at the solid torus, it's just not going to work. For instance, I mean, if you're you're irreducible if you're, the boundary is compressible, then you're a solid torus. <coughs> and um, you see, then the only so that's not answering your question, but you can see right away that, that it's going to fail there because the only representation then you get with solid torus is, you know, from uh, the only thing which is going to be detected is lambda one because it's going from pi one to h one. But yeah, it fails because um, okay, let me think about this. See, uh, well, I guess just applying that by finding the that that's yeah. I use the fact that this uh, the surface F here has positive genus. So this discrete faithful thing in the PSL2R uh, with, with substance, because I'm using that's implicit in here uh, to show that there exists a lift with this property. You really need the fact that F has positive genus. You know, I, I, I mean, this is classic work of. Uh, you have a discrete faithful representation by one at PSL two R, and you uh, this is a free group with lifts to SL two tilde, and you can ask what's the translation number of the lift of whatever and that's classically known. Uh, what that is, anyway, I, I, we can talk about it later. But it just you the argument just breaks down at this at this stage. Um, Okay, so um, I mean, does it, doesn't it? I mean, if, if T is uh, compressible, then you basically have an M one that is a solid torus. Yes, right. I mean, it's just not going to work. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Like I said, I wanted to, I guess I, uh, so anyway, you put all this together. What, what have we done? Uh, we take our toroidal set of multi three sphere, we write the SM1 and the lean M2, and I've got this incompressible torus, and we found a slope on that torus, which is order detected on each side. In other words, there's some special type of representation on each side, and that is sufficient. And that's this, uh, this theorem C. Is gluing theorem to say that now I can alter these representations so they match up on the uh, on the torus, and so then you, you get a representation on the whole thing. <clears throat> so uh, conjecturally, uh, so we know these manifolds by F to carry are not uh, L spaces. Now we know they have left orbital autonomous group. They should have oriented affiliations. So what can you do? Well, what you can do is, uh, where did I finish? Yeah, I'll leave those here and go back over here. Um, it turns out that there's a relative form of the L space conjecture for manifolds with torus boundary. And there is a notion. A slope detection, uh, sorry, foliation detection of slopes. And
And it's actually very simple to state. So let's say that I have, here's the boundary of M1, and I want a co-oriented type foliation F on M1, and I want F to be transverse to the boundary of M1, is T. And I want to look at F intersect T is a foliation on T. Okay, uh, and what I want is that, let's call this uh, F sub T. F sub T is a suspension foliation. What, if you just concretely what that means, if there are no components when I hit the boundary, which look have these revanuli, these don't occur. That's the that is the obstruction to being a suspension foliation. A suspension a suspension foliation is just when you have a map S one uh, to S one, and you look at um, now the foliation of S one cross I by horizontal lines, and then you glue together using the F. And that gives you a foliation of the blue torus by, by lines. That's a suspension foliation. And, and that, that's, uh, you are a suspension foliation if and only if when you hit the boundary, you don't have any of these rebands. Anyway. So I want that. And uh, at least one leaf of FT is a curve. A slope alpha. So, uh, a slope, so called slope alpha. And that means here that when I look at the boundary, the foliation is going to hit it and it's going to foliate this torus, uh, could have been foliation, but I want at least one of the leaves. All the other leaves could be uh, just copies of R, the reals. Uh, but I want at least one leaf that's a curved, simple growth curve of slope alpha. And that's what foliation detection is. Now, what it turns out to be true, um, it's not very difficult to prove that the analog of serum C holds for foliation detection. If I had a manifold which is a union of two knot manifolds along the torus, and there's a slope on that torus which is foliation detected on both sides, then there's a current type foliation on the whole manifold. So you can modify those foliations so that they agree on the, on the torus. And um, so uh, we have foliation detection, we have gluing works, um, and so the proof that I sketched uh, that the fundamental groups of toroidal into germology three spheres are uh, left orderable should lead to a proof that they also have corrine to type foliations. But the problem is it's unknown whether theorem B holds. It's expected that it holds, but it's unknown. So I'll just write that as a conjecture. any slope of distance one from the longitudinal slope of a uh, ZHS, not manifold, this foliation detected. So uh, in a more concrete way, take any knot uh, in the three sphere non-trivial knot, you expect there's a, the meridional slope, that's distance one from the longitude, should be foliation detected. You should be able to find a foliation of this sort uh, 
on the exterior of the knot, which hits the boundary in at least at least one of the leaves is meridional. So that's that's known, for instance, if you are uh, a fiber knot, but it's open in general. Yeah. Tal should be working on that. <laughs> um, yeah, but if you could prove this, uh, then uh, you would you could deduce that the uh, all integer uh, toroidal integer homology three spheres are um, are uh, have coordinates of population. So this is quite typical. What, what I want to say here there's these notions of slope detection, it's gluing, etc. And formally, you can define it. You can even define it for uh, hagar fleur homology detection of slope via hagar fleur homology. You have comparable gluing theorem. That's Hanselman, Rasmussen, and Watson, and that they're formally the same in each of the three different categories: so left workability, the, the gluing, and the uh, and and detection. I mean, the, the way they behave. Now, what's missing, uh, what's completely known in the hagar fleur thing, is exactly which slopes are detected. Uh, what's missing in the uh, orderability side and in foliation is showing that comparable sets are uh, detected. In fact. The, uh, I said there's a relative version of the L space conjecture, which would say that the set of detected slopes uh, for each and each of these three things, it's the same set. And that's, uh, you see what I mean? Uh, the set of slopes detected by Hagar Fleur homology is the same as the set of slopes detected by left over uh, orders, the same as detected by foliation. That should be true, that's unknown. It should be true, and if you can prove that, that's essentially proving the L-space conjecture for toroidal manifolds. Um, so you said it's true for fiber knots? Yes. Uh, well, you use your work and uh, Rachel's work. <laughs> uh, well, okay, so you know you build uh, brand surfaces, Rachel-type brand surfaces. Uh, which carry, the, you look at the train track on the boundary, it carry some original slope. Okay. And you, you choose uh, the pattern that being uh, on the boundary. So let me use your work to extend, uh, you, what, use that French surface to construct a lamination and then extend it to a foliation lamination. Okay. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of, so I have about five minutes left, I think. So maybe I'll make a couple of remarks. Uh, so I guess uh, that's where I'll leave this. I mean, there's, uh, like I said, for, uh, this is a sampler. This is one thing you can do. You can do things with many other types of toroidal manifolds. By the way, these, uh, this relative version of the um, L-space conjecture is true for, uh, when all the manifolds are ciphered. So, and that's how the uh, L-space conjecture for graph manifolds is proved. You know, you deal with the pieces and the cipher pieces, all these different notions of detection coincide, and then you have comparable gluing terms, and it all works. And uh, presumably, the same technology uh, uh, can lead to proofs of the L-space conjecture for toroidal manifolds. Um, I'll just mention a couple of other results. Uh, uh, again, it's like it's a sampler, and I think are interesting applications. Um, so here's a theorem. So suppose the JSJ graph of a satellite knot. So what do I mean by that? If I take a uh, satellite knot and I look at a JSJ decomposition of the exterior, uh, you know, I might have These are the tori in the JSG decomposition. You have a dual graph for that. 
each complementary component has is a vertex, and then you join the two vertices if they share in their boundaries each condition of source. So JSJ graph uh, is not an interval. Because it always has to be a tree here. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. It has to be a tree, and in fact, it's a rooted tree because the boundary, the component containing the boundary, is uh, distinguished. That any rooted tree is the JSJ graph of some not. So, um, not an interval, and R. The Q. So I want to think now that this is a slope on the knot. The usual uh, way of thinking of the, the slopes on the knot in S3 is rational numbers. It's not the slope of a cabling. Of satellite knot K. So this satellite knot might be a cable knot. Uh, so this would be a cable space, the outermost piece. That's ciphered, and then so there's a ciphered fiber, and the cabling slope is the slope of the ciphered fiber in there. There's for a given satellite knot, there's at most one slope, which can be a cabling slope. So it's not uh, much of a constraint to avoid this. We want to avoid it because if you do, I'm going to say something about surgery. Uh, along uh, R surgery, if you are uh, the cabling slope and you do R surgery, you end up with a reducible manifold. Uh, the manifold won't be uh, CTF or LO because of that. Uh, so, cabling of K, then KR is LO and NLS. So in other words, uh, this is, as long as the JSJ graph is not an interval, then uh, basically any rational name filling, I, I'm not doing original name filling, so the rational name filling, but I, I avoid the uh, cabling slope because that would uh, give me a reducible manifold. Uh, if it is cabled, then uh, KR has a left orbital fundamental group and it's NLS. Now, as I mentioned to Ken this morning, this. Uh, actually follows from a beautiful result of his and uh, Kimihiko Motegi uh, on uh, where they, they proved that an L space knot, uh, which is a satellite knot, the pattern is braided in the pattern self story. So, um, but this gives an, another approach to it. not proving their result, but uh, their result immediately implies this. Uh, but, okay. Now, it is also. CTF if original slopes. This is this conjecture on, uh, that I mentioned for original slopes of non trivial knots in S3 are. Um, uh, foliation detected. So, uh, that, as I said, we, this is conjectured. It's true for fiber knots, but uh, it's, we, it's wide open in general. We don't know how to prove it. If that was true, then you could, you could follow this. So, let, let me just say here, the proof has a certain structure, but that's a structure that you can use in any of the categories, uh, LO, NLS, and CTF. And it's the same, it's the same game. It's like, uh, detection and gluing games to do it. But but then you can shift because the formally they, they look like the same, uh, they behave the same between the different categories, uh, LO, NLS, and foliation detection. Okay, so this means that if you're going to look at, say, L space knots and you want to understand them, at least if they're satellite knots, well, they're J, they have to, the JSJ graphs have to look like this. Quite simple, relatively simple. Okay, and um, three, you know, it has to be in S3, right? Uh, yeah, here it's in S3. Yeah, and it's, that's used. So maybe I'll just make one uh, 
final. So up to now, I've just talked about results where you can shift from one uh, one of the facets of the L space conjecture to another in a very formal way. Uh, I'll just finish off. I, I, I won't even. I haven't mentioned pseudo Anislav flows. All these applications today have been using the homeomorphism of the homomorphisms to homeo plus S1 you get through Thurston's universal circle. But uh, you can uh, also use things like pseudo Anislav flows. And yeah, what you can do is uh, show that many, essentially, <laughs> all cyclic branch covers, not even the standard cyclic branch covers uh, of uh, certain hyperbolic links are uh, of left orderable fundamental groups. So I, I won't go into that, but uh, let me just mention one result I think is nice as Allison is here. Um, so. And I'll finish with this. So uh, I'll just say this is using pseudo NSL flows. Um, let K be a fibered strongly quasi positive not a positive hyperbolic knot for instance k is a hyperbolic L space knot Okay, so if you like, just, just focus on that. We're looking at hyperbolic L space knots. Then the n fold cyclic branch cover sigma nk uh, of k is LO for all and we are not two. So, um, well, okay, so take a hyperbolic L space knots. All the cyclic branch covers have left orderable fundamental groups. So you expect them to be uh, not be L spaces and to have coordinated dot foliations. Uh, like I said, I won't go into the proof, but what you're going to use here is that if you are fibered, uh, you're hyperbolic, so you have a pseudo Anisov uh, monodromy, and the suspension flow of that is. Uh, um, it's a pseudo anisov flow, if you like, on the not complement. And you can use the, uh, like the Calgary Dunfield or Finley um, asymptotic circle representations and their properties to, to prove something like this. But let me remark there was, Allison had a question. I don't know when you made the question, but it was at least six or seven years ago. <laughs> Uh, is it true that the uh, the twofold cyclic that is it true that sigma two k is NLS whenever k is a hyperbolic L space knot? Um, well, so what's what was known? I was known about this. Uh, so what do you do with this? Uh, uh, well, we we can't solve this problem. We we couldn't solve this problem, but I'll tell you what can be done. Uh, uh, so sigma n k is. By the way, since we know all of these branch curves are LO, we're expecting uh, the the answer to. Uh, Austin's question is yes. Um, if n is at least four, and that was a result of mine with Michel Boileau and Cameron, 
And then this was mentioned the other day. Um, Farber, I'm not going to write out the names, uh, Reynoso and Wang uh, did an N equal 3 about a year ago. Uh, this, this is, I think it was non-trivial getting here. I know a number of good people, they were looking at this from a different point of view. They just want to understand what are genus 2 L space knots. Well, you see what, it followed from the, this work here that if you had a hyperbolic L space knot for which the threefold branch cyclic cover uh, was in L space, then you had to be genus two, you had to have the Alexander polynomial of a two five torus knot, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you know, people knew this and, uh, but, and, and worked hard to uh, try to show that in fact you had to be the two five torus knot and that's, in, that's what they did. But as a consequence of that, uh, it follows that uh, these manifolds are not L spaces, N equals three. And N equal two, the original question, is is very much open. Uh, so there's a, a challenge, you know, take a hyperbolic L space knot, show that the two full branch cyclic cover is uh, not in L space. We know it has a left order of one more group. If, <laughs> so what, if it's a tunnel knot, no, that probably, well, it's probably too restrictive, but I was just going to try to apply your result on this morning. Uh, you know, if, if you know the Hagar genus of, of sigma 2k was uh, uh, 2, then, uh, then you'd, you'd be okay. Uh, but this is very much open, and I, I'm imagining quite non-trivial. Uh, you could ask as well, CTF, this is uh, very unsatisfactory, the current situation. It's known uh, if n is bigger than uh, or equal to 2 times 2g of k. And that's essentially due to Rachel Roberts. Um, uh, so uh, anyway, okay, I'll stop there. Thank you.